new section on enumerators, I think you're going to have a lot of fun. You're going to see some of the functional programming aspects of Ruby and how powerful it can be. You can see how in one line of code we can do what requires many lines of codes in other programming languages. So you're going to really see Ruby working here. The first the uh, first function that we're going to go on for this video is going to be the select statement. So let me pose a question to you. I'm going to pose a different question on each one of these programs we built. So I'm going to say, uh, what if we have an array? So we're given an array of integers and we want to only show or only grab the even integers. How could we do that? So in other programming languages, you could do something like, uh, well, first you'd need to iterate over it. So you could say, you know, while X is less than, uh, you know, whatever the end of that array value would be, and then you're going to iterate through each element and then uh, say if that whatever that particular element is and then you uh, there's a special function called the modulus function um, if I modulo 2 is equal to 0 and then you know puts I that kind of thing that's what you'd have to do in most languages when you need to grab even numbers Ruby has a great built-in method called select that does exactly what you would think it does. It selects those items. So let's create an enumerator. I'm going to say one and put this in parentheses, one dot dot 10. So this is going to give us all the values if we wanted to, um, if we want to iterate over it, we've already done this, so uh, we don't have to redo it. But if you want to iterate over it, you can go grab them and see that uh, this gives you all the values 1 through 10. Uh, this by itself is not an array, so I'm going to convert it to an array and then run select on it. So from here, select takes a block. So I could either do this where I say select, do, and then um, pass a iterator variable in this case I'll just say X and then I'll say X even and uh, let's see if this will work if I hit run there we go it grabbed all the even integers now there's a way to make this even better and uh, it's a way to put it all on one line so I'm gonna get rid of this do and replace it with curly braces and let's do this again, hit run, and you can see it returns all the even values. Now I wanna show you a way that is even better. So this is something, uh, I'm not just showing it to you because it's cool, I'm also showing it to you for practical reasons because if you're taking on a Ruby project from somebody else, you're gonna see all different kinds of syntaxes. So it's really important to get a good understanding for each of them now. Um, so I can get rid of all of this and I can just pass in a symbol so I can make even a symbol put this in parentheses put a ampersand in front of it and say even hit run and you can see it does the exact same thing so what's going on right here? This seems kind of weird. It definitely looks weird if you've never seen this kind of syntax before. And what it is, is it's a shortcut from, uh, from Ruby where when you put this ampersand in front of a symbol like this, you're able to skip the other part of the syntax. So it essentially gives you a shortcut. Now I know that I did that kind of fast, so let's just rewind and I'm gonna show you all three syntaxes that you can use. So I'm gonna say select, give it an iterator variable, and then pass this to it. That's one way of doing it. And then the third way would be making this a do an end block, and then putting this 
there and you can see if I hit return, it gives you the exact same value. So all three of these things are doing the same task, but if you look at a professional Ruby developer's code, you're usually gonna see this syntax right here. Uh, and what this is doing, the, uh, the ampersand means that you're passing a block and so it's expecting an array of values and, or an enumerator uh, set of values, a collection, if you were, and it's going to go and it bypasses having to have an iterator variable. It does that. It just assumes, oh, you are passing this block or this uh, method into this block. So I'm just guessing you're going to want to do this or apply this method to each value. If you don't want to apply it to each value, then obviously you would need to uh, to give it an explicit value like this. But if you ever have something where you want to pass a method to each value in an array or collection, this is a really nice way of doing it. So that is a basic way to use select. I'm going to show you a few more examples and I'm going to show you an example where uh, this block method right here, where this one would not work. So I'm going to delete this and let's, I'm going to type another question. So right here, what if we wanted to grab all, uh, if, say that we had an array of words or we had a sentence and we wanted to take that and we wanted to return only the words that were over five letters. So given an array of strings, you could also say a sentence, return only the words that are over five letters. Okay, so, and we're gonna use select to do that. And we're also going to use a new type of array syntax. So I'm going to do a percent sign followed by parentheses. And in the parentheses, I'm going to just type a sentence out. I don't need to use string, uh, quotation marks, anything like that. You can just type it straight in. And what uh, what Ruby is going to do, which is a really cool syntax, is it's going to take this. Oh, I'm sorry, I have to do a percent and a W. It's going to take this and it's going to convert each word into an element in the array. So I'm going to say the, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Okay, so now if I just want to see what this gives me, hit run, and you'll see that it took each one of those values and it converted each of them into a element in an array, which is pretty cool. And you can convert, you can see, uh, you can say call size on this and it'll tell you how many words are in there. So uh, that's something neat, but I want to get this array and I'm gonna store it in a variable. So uh, I'm just gonna store it in an R variable so it's easier to read. And then I'm gonna say R select, and now we're gonna pass in the curly braces. Once again, I could do the do end block. I'm not gonna do it again. I think you saw me do it about five times already in this episode. So I'm gonna say select, and then I'm gonna grab a value here. So um, the iterator variable is going to be x and then I'm going to call a method on that. So I'm going to say x dot length and greater than five. And so what this is doing and you can see why we can't use that ampersand uh, block shortcut and it's because uh, we're actually doing a comparison right here. So I'm going to say uh, I'm calling select on the method and then I am calling on each element in that array I am going to be calling length on it and then I'm going to be comparing that length with five and if it's a word that's greater than five then I want to store that and that's what the return select is going to be so let's see what happens here if I hit run goes through it and it's going to return each one of the values that are over five and there we go it only had one word so we have the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog and that's all correct so let's just add a couple more just to make sure that everything's working hit run again and there you go, it grabbed the three values uh, that had a value over five. So that is a really cool way of using select to uh, 
to do comparisons. Now let's do one more for this episode. And so I'm going to say in this one, this one's going to be another given an array of strings. So I'm going to leave that as the same. I, I'm going to say return all of the vowels. And this is going to be a cool episode or a section of the episode because here I'm going to show you how to use regular expressions. You may or may not have used these before, but um, I'm going to uh, show you a, a way you can do it. And then in a later episode, we're going to get into using them quite a bit more. But this will be kind of an intro to it. So I'm going to say we're going to create an array just like we did before and I'm not going to store this one in variable because it's nice and short and then I'll call select on it and I'm going to pass it in a iterator variable and in this case I'm going to say v for vowel and I'm going to say v is equal to and if you've never seen this syntax before with this little curly line right here uh, this is in the top left hand side of your keyboard probably right under your escape key and you have to hit shift to get to it so what this is doing this is a, a regular expression selector so you do this when you want to grab uh, or you want to set up a regular expression so and then the other syntax you need to do is whatever you want to grab you put inside of these slashes and I want to grab all vowels so I'm gonna say a e i o and you so uh, like I said this video is not our regular expression video we're gonna we have a whole section dedicated just to regular expressions but this is a good intro to it to see how you can use select for it so what this is going to do it's going to iterate over our set of uh, of letters right here and it's going to convert that to an array from there it's going to pass each it's going to iterate over each item store that item as V then it's going to do a regular expression pattern recognition uh, system where right here where it looks and it says okay a is that anywhere here and it's going to hit the first one it's going to say yes okay so we're going to go dump this and select then it's going to go to B it's going to go through it's going to say B yet or no 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 so skip over it now go to C do the same thing and it's going to do that for each value so uh, let's see if this works hit run and there you go it went and it grabbed a and E so this is a way that you can grab all of the vowels out of a string so you learned how to use three different forms of the select method along with a number of different syntax options so uh, you should have a good feeling for how to use select and also how powerful it is in the next video we're going to go through another really exciting method called the map method